Hey, it's Wednesday. Time for another Action Figure Adventures video here on SEO Tour Review. Today, we're doing a flea market finds video. Let's get into it and check out all the awesome stuff we found at local flea markets and yard sales. First up, we have a Kenner Star Wars Jabba the Hutt dais here. This is the little platform he sits on from the vintage toy line. It's a tan platform here. It's got these little faces on the front. One has a rope going through it so you could capture a victim. Too bad they never made a Slave Leia or any of their dancing girls for the vintage line. But the outer faces here open the trap door to the Rancor Pit. Which isn't quite accurate since uh, Jabba the Hutt didn't sit on top of the Rancor Pit. But there was a grate that they watched through. So they're sort of combining some elements. And underneath here there is some sculpted in skulls and rats and stuff. So you could throw a character in there and trap them in and pretend they're in the Rancor Pit anyway. Alright, these next two figures I'm showing off together because they have a kind of a common theme. First up, we have a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers villain here. This is the Minotaur. Rita sends this guy down to fight the Rangers. He has a button on the back here that should activate his arms, but uh, that mechanism isn't working so hot. But he looks good. He's in good shape. Uh, you know, nice paint. Got the little skirt piece. I think he had a, a club or a shield or some sort of weapon originally, but, you know, what can you expect for a yard sale? Over here we have Ground Chuck, one of the wacky, crazy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle characters, side characters, from the original toy line. I never had him as a kid. For some reason, I always try and think his name is Bullseye, but I think that's because there was like a red beanie baby bull named Bullseye back in the day. Uh, and he does kind of have a target here on his chest. But Ground Round, he was in one of the video games, the Turtles in Time video game, maybe as a boss, I forget which one. He's kind of cool, no accessories, a little bit of paint wear on his horn, but another excellent find. I did pick up a couple other Mighty Morphin Power Ranger figures. We've got Kimberly the Pink Ranger, she was a kid's meal prize back when the Power Ranger movie came out. She's got the little pterodactyl symbol on her chest there. Oops, knocking everybody over. You can sit up there with Baby Skeletor. And over here we have the Black Ranger. He is uh, from the original Mighty Morphin Power Ranger line. I believe this is a motorcycle driver figure based on molds for die-cast Power Ranger figures from Japan or Sentai figures from Japan. He, he looks like he should come with a blaster that goes in that holster there. Uh, but he's got articulation at the shoulders, the elbows, the hips, the knees, and at the head there. Nice figure. I actually like the fact that he doesn't have the Mastodon Power Coin on his chest that most of the American Power Ranger toys featured. Next up, we have two more female figures. The ladies are well represented in this episode. We have Gee from Captain Planet and the Planeteers. She's the Planeteer with the water ring. Unfortunately, her legs are a little warped, so she has some trouble standing. I did try the hot water trick on her uh, to try and straighten them out, but it seems like they kind of slowly gone back to their warped position. So I may still be looking for another Gee. And here we have Street Fighter the movie version of Chun-Li. This is the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie figure toy line. And this figure is so much more accurate to the movie and to the video game than the original G.I. Joe Street Fighter one that used the uh, Ninja Force Scarlet body. She actually has, um, you know, the right detailing on her top there. She has the spiked wrist guards. She's got the boots with the skirt piece. Um, I think it's a different head, but it's still just like a slightly nicer head. But the, you know, the, the original Hasbro one for the G.I. Joe line did have the little bun pieces. So that was like the only part that they had sculpted for the original version. So this one's really nice. I remember seeing her in stores. I remember actually wanting a lot of the Street Fighter movie figures. But I was, I guess, in middle school maybe. And I just didn't buy them. I was kind of on that edge where I, I wasn't really buying toys. Although I still liked looking at them in the stores and admiring them. Uh, I really wanted the Vega and the Chun-Li and maybe a few other ones. And I just didn't buy any of them. It's cool to finally have Chun-Li. Alright, next up we've got some bikers. Well, just to get this out of the way, I found a Flak Viper backpack from G.I. Joe. So, you know, cheap G.I. Joe accessory. Had to pick that up. Here we've got the Power of the Force 2 Biker Scout figure uh, from Hasbro or Kenner. You know, the, the, the 90s re-releases. Really liked that figure as a kid. Enjoyed the speeder bike. The speeder bike itself was a retool of the vintage one, but the figure was updated a little bit nicer looking, although less practical off the bike. 
Uh, and he's actually helping support or supporting, I don't know which side of, who's doing more work here. But he's helping hold up the Ram motorcycle, which is it, my all-time favorite G.I. Joe vehicle. Uh, I love these things. I can't pass them up, even when they're like this one missing decals and sidecars and everything else. But uh, if I see these cheap, I pick them up at yard sales and toy shows and stuff. Uh, I had one of these as a kid, and uh, it made a real impression on me. This guy's part of the Kenner Ghostbusters line, and he came with a little red moped motorcycle thing. And he and the moped could turn into scary stuff. The moped turned into like a praying mantis or insect-like monster. And uh, they, they were called Wicked Wheelie together, transformed. Driver and, and moped transform into Wicked Wheelie or something like that. And so his face just flips down to reveal a gross tongue and eyeball. And he's got a motor and a wheel inside there. So he's kind of weird and gross and strange. But I had him as a kid and uh, I sold him at a yard sale many, many years ago. And then when I saw this one at a yard sale, I just decided to grab him again to keep with my Ghostbusters. I couldn't really find any more themes, so we're going to go a little rapid fire here. We got an 80s Care Bear, a modern Indiana Jones, and a Spiral Zone bad guy. This is an often forgotten toy line by Tonka, and it had these larger scale figures with cloth clothing. I think this outfit's on and wrong. I think the armor goes over top the the jumpsuit, but uh, you don't see these a lot. They had a cartoon show. Um, I remember liking it as a kid. I didn't have any of the toys. It was... I don't know, early 90s maybe. But they were kind of neat, and I have one of the other bad guys that I got in a lot. He's actually missing uh, one of his hands. But they're neat, and it was cheap, so I just grabbed it because I thought it'd be fun to show it all to you guys. If you enjoy these flea market find videos, make sure you leave a comment below so I know to keep making them. Thanks for watching this action figure adventures video. Do Baby Skeletor a favor, hit that like and subscribe button.